Our topic now is depression, and we're blessed to have Randy Alcorn, author of 45 books, with us to talk about this important and significant theme here on Theology Refresh. Uh, Randy, would you define for us uh, what is depression and connect your experience with depression for us? I think depression is uh, something that's elusive, but we sort of know what it is. It's it's a, a the state of having this cloud over you, this sense of um, being ill at ease, uh, uh, kind of a loss of uh, happiness, uh, a sense of where's the joy in my life, you know. Um, my own experience with depression has not been extensive, but I have had periods of time, um, one time uh, four months, where every day I would get up, I'd spend time with the Lord, but I'd get up in the morning and I wasn't just tired, I didn't just need a cup of coffee, it's just that there was this dark cloud and the interesting thing was, it was not at a time in my life where all kinds of things were going wrong. There, there have been many other times in my life where there's been a lot of stress, a lot of things going on, where I felt a great peace and contentment with the Lord. And then this was in a period of time where not much was happening that was creating pressure, but for undefinable reasons. I just didn't know why. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, anxiety is like high stakes and low control, uh, depression is just this sense sometimes of, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I can't just point my finger at the reasons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, when people talk about the causes of depression, what, what does your experience make that conversation of, of causes sound like? Are there any things we can point to in terms of causes, or is it that elusive? I, I think it is very elusive, and it's different for different people. I think um, sometimes when we talk about depression, anxiety, uh, fear, um, whatever it might be, uh, we, we kind of start saying, well, this is what it is. But for some people, it comes in a different shape and, and form. Certainly, depression can be triggered by very negative events happening in your life. Your child is dying of leukemia. Uh, your spouse has left you. Uh, you've lost your job different circumstantial things in life. Uh, other times, as I said, in my case, uh, you, you can't point to a particular reason. Uh, one of the things that I've learned in my own uh, depression periodically when it comes upon me uh, is that God is there with me in the depression. Mm -hmm. It used to be that I would think, okay, this is wrong. I, I shouldn't feel this way. I should have the joy of the Lord, and indeed we should. But at the same time, what I do is try to get out of the depression. What can I do to get out of this? And I think what's been most helpful to me, uh, and in that period of four-month depression, I came to the point where no matter what I did, it wasn't going away. Mm -hmm. So then finally I was saying, okay, Lord, walk with me in this. Mm -hmm. Help me to learn from this. So I looked at Romans 8, and you've got, if God be for us, who can be against mm -hmm. us? And nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. We're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Certainly, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. So in the middle of my depression, I'm meditating on those things, mm -hmm. and I'm sensing the presence of God. Strangely, sensing his presence in deeper ways sometimes mm -hmm. uh, than when everything was going just fine. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, mysterious causes, mysterious cures, if, even, if, if we'd even use the word cure. Talk about what are some of the things that can be pursued even though there's not the one-to-one the -one effect. I think certainly going to God's word, um, praying, getting support from other people. I was very honest with my wife, some of my friends. I blogged about it. I went to Charles Spurgeon, who experienced a lot of depression throughout his life. He was plagued even many years later through that instance where, um, was it six people that who died in that, in, you know, the, the crowd as somebody yelled fire mm -hmm. falsely, there wasn't a fire, and, and that was when he was a very young pastor. But th th those memories would come back mm -hmm. and haunt him at times. And it was actually very reassuring to me to see Charles Spurgeon, who I admire so much, and you say, well, well, n I don't think anybody would say, well, 
the reason that Spurgeon experienced such depression is because he just wasn't Christ-centered and he didn't know God's word mm -hmm. and he didn't contemplate. No, no, no. Those, uh, the closeness to God that he experienced, the joy and the happiness that he repeatedly talks about, much of that comes out of his attempts to find that happiness and to find that joy in Christ, and successfully so, but in a life that involved a great deal of physical pain mm -hmm. and his wife being an invalid and his own uh, experience of depression. I blogged about that and then I got many people writing to me and saying this is so helpful that mm -hmm. you'd be honest enough to talk about this. So there were a number of things that helped get me through that time, but certainly being honest, taking it to the Lord and saying, God, I'm not living simply to have you cure, fix my problem. Uh, any more than I would say, make me no longer an insulin-dependent diabetic, which I am and have been. Mm -hmm. If he wants to heal me of that, heal me mm -hmm. of it. But I'm not going to wait till he heals me. Yeah. Same thing with depression. Don't wait till you're out of it uh, to move on in life. Mm -hmm. Move on now in the presence of God. And there's a real sweetness to yes. that. So uh, vocationally, for a writer, a pastor, um, a layperson, uh, there's still tasks we must, must engage in, even as we feel this spiritual depression. Any, any counsel in relation to that? Yeah, one of the things I would say is, okay, Lord, help me to get through this day with all the responsibilities that I have, all the people I'm supposed to meet with, all the writing I'm supposed to do, the meetings, whatever it is. But help me to sense your presence in the moment. Help me not simply to force myself to do this, putting one foot in front of the other on my own strength, but instead to relax and say, God, you help me, mm -hmm. you lead me, you guide me. I need to lean on you to get through this day. So that at the end of the day, I won't say, okay, I did it again. I forced my way through the day, but no, God, you were with me in this. Yes. Randy, how about counsel for pastors, other leaders, as they minister to the, to the depressed? How should they go about ministering to others who are experiencing depression? I think one thing is to, to not begin by thinking, okay, something is automatically terribly wrong mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Let people say what they're feeling and express why they think they're feeling it. Certainly, it's always a good response to say, look to the Lord, yes. depend on Him for strength. But be careful not to lecture people mm -hmm. who may already be going to the Lord mm -hmm. and still experiencing depression. I mean, again, think if you were meeting with Charles Spurgeon, would you be saying, now Charles, if you would just spend time in the Word, mm -hmm. and if you would just depend on God, and if you would just do that, then your depression would go away. Yeah. Uh, no, understand that this person may be having time with God, they may be pursuing all kinds of ways to get better, but so far it hasn't happened, and yes. that's why they've come to you for help. So be sensitive to them, but of course don't hesitate to bring to them the importance of focusing on the Lord. Yes. Set your mind on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, Colossians 3. Think from an eternal perspective, and look at Romans 8.28 in terms of retroactively, as we'll see it, someday, retrospect, we'll, we'll, we'll look back and we'll say, now I see how God has caused all mm -hmm. things to work together for good. That this is one of those things in your life and God will use this depression you've experienced for good. So yes, I will try to help you out of it, but don't think your life and your walk with God will not begin until you are out of it. Yes, thank you. Would you pray for our listeners as we close? Absolutely. Father, thank you for your love and your grace. Uh, thank you for every person who might be struggling with depression, every pastor, every lay leader, missionary, whoever it might be. We pray, Father, uh, for the presence of your spirit in their lives and an empowerment, a supernatural awakening in them, a sense of your presence. And pray for your blessing um, and help them to look forward to the new heavens and the new earth where... Um, everything will be right, mm -hmm. where you will wipe away the tears from every eye. Thank you for that promise and help us to hold to that blood-bought promise and, and to realize today your presence with us and your encouragement. We pray that you would lift depression, but if you choose not to lift it, that even in it we would be faithful and sense your presence. We ask this in Jesus' name.